previously on Balls. Mark. Great, you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Nice to chat to you again. Nice to catch up with you. Had a really good chat to your boot uh, last week. And mm-hmm. uh, how's, he, how's he looking ahead of the Open? 14 South Africans uh, doing battle. Is that the biggest outside of uh, UK and, and USA? Yeah, I, I'm excited. We've got some, you know, obviously a big contingent here of South Africans. The, the boys were out on mass yesterday. It was really rainy at one stage, but they were all out practicing. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's so nice to see the South African contingent out here because there's a lot of South African folks that live in the UK as well. Mm-hmm. So then the fans come out, and the flags fly. And when I traveled in yesterday, I, I saw the South African Airlines tail there and the at British uh, at Br- the British Airways terminal, so so it, it's it's a sort of nice home feeling for me, even though we're in the UK. Uh, you say the South Africans there on mass, or the golfers are there on mass. I think maybe some of the golfers are going to mass because the way we've been hearing about them whining about the conditions and the rough and everything, I think a lot of them are at the moment praying. Yeah, it's tough out here. Let me tell you, I, the, when I saw Trevor for the first time, because I got in here only yesterday morning. When I saw him for the first time, I was like, so how is it? And he looked at me and he sort of raised his eyebrows. He's like, it's Who are you? Up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so uh, the, the, course is, the course is there to be played on, though. You know, I, I feel like even though the, it's going to be gusty out there tomorrow, there'll be someone in this large field that will get it under par. You know, whether, whether people are way under par at the end of the week, I think, is going to be mm. interesting. But, 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 you know, the, the course is there to be had if you hit the ball accurately and you keep it out of the pot bunkers. Simon had a, a very shrewd uh, suggestion for all the golfers there yesterday on the show. Uh, what was your what was your tip uh, to to play in these conditions? What I said, hit it on the fairway. Just keep it on the fairway and dry your eyes. I can't have the can't have the world's best bitching and moaning like that. I mean, the call, it's the open. It's meant to be tough. Well, I, well uh, uh, on the open rotor, Lytham St Anne's has the most fa- uh, the most bunkers on the course out of all of them. I think. Someone told me a number of like 207 bunkers or something like that. So And it's they, not an Ernie Els course. Say again? And it's not an Ernie Els course. Or a Nicholas design. Or a Nicholas course. That's amazing. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's demanding off the tee. Um, and and there, there's a lot of crosswinds that, that, that blow there. The westerly that, that comes off the uh, ocean here is typically the prevailing wind, which blows a little across the course. So if you're driving it well, you can you, you can play Lytham St. Anne's. And then... You know, the guys that have won you in the past, you know, Duval, Lehman, they, they're all guys that can flight the ball pretty well. So if you can keep the thing down and keep it in the fairway, again, I, I feel like you can score around you. Duval's the last person to win the Open at this uh, this track. And you say, guys that flight the ball, can you even get it off the tee at the moment? <laughs> Darren, I'm not going to answer that question. You do this to me every single time. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're questions that I just have to avoid. He wants you to incriminate yourself. Are you coaching him, Mr. Yeah. Immelman? <laughs> You know, Simon, I've known this guy for so long. I've figured he's wild out by now. <laughs> Are you coaching him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I think maybe if you, you are, maybe you should know. How is his golf at the moment? Because he started kind of like making a bit of a comeback, but he's disappeared again, hasn't he? You know, he's he's got so many other interests, David Duval. He's, he, he loves snowboarding. He's a voracious reader. He's got his family that live, I think, still out in Denver right now. I'm not sure. So... He's got a lot of other stuff on the go. Mm. Um, t- I haven't seen him out on the tour very much lately, but I saw him on the range yesterday afternoon. He was hitting shots out there, and you know, who knows? Maybe he, he comes back to the venue of his triumph, and and uh, it might spur some good stuff in him. Yeah, who knows? I mean, in these conditions, anything's possible. Just tell us. I mean, uh, I was watching the French Open last week, uh, and the guys were saying, you know, they were they were talking about the conditions and, and the rough in particular, and saying, well. If they can handle this, they'll definitely be able to handle next week at the Open. Now, mm-hmm. pa- uh, clearly they must have done something in the next week because uh, it's, it appears that the rough is even worse than uh, some of the guys would have experienced at the French. Well, you know what? I, I spoke with some guys that got in here Friday last week and it was dry then. So so they were like, you know, if you hit it in the wispy stuff, it was okay. Mm. But now they've had a lot of rain. So since since the rain has come about, it's gotten the, the bed of the rough has gotten a lot thicker. So you know, it's tough now, and, and they've forecast some more rain this evening, so it'll get difficult. But it's the, the same thing, you know, there, there's, the fairways are fairly generous. Um, if you get it wide, you're going to get into trouble. So, so it's, it's the real inaccurate guys that I think are going to struggle. All right, so having said that, it, it seems pretty cut and dry. Those, uh, just first of all, I was saying, uh, on these links courses, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you hit it down the middle that you're going to finish on the fairway. Is this course also one of those where it's got a lot of those hobbles and mounds and bounce? So you could you could smack it down the middle and end up in the long stuff anyway. 
No, you know, Laren, uh, Darren, 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 Darren. I'm trying to get Lynx and Darren into one word. Yes, knock. It, it, it is. It is very lengthy, but it's unlike a lot of them where if you hit it down the fairway, some mound is going to repel the ball into a bunker. Yeah. Um, it, you, you know, there's there's movement on the fairways, but it's not as vigorous as, say, Royal St. George's. So you can hit it down the fairway and still be okay here. You know, the ball's going to move some, but, but if you mm. get it offline, it's, it's going into a bunker. So Mickelson's dead then? Yeah, yeah Mickelson, Tiger gone. He was having a pretty... You, you see, I've, I've got some fans behind me. I, yeah, who, who is that that keeps walking around the back there? This, this is my host for the week. Hello. They, they live in Erinvale for six months of the year, and they live in Lytham for the other six, the other half of the year. And I'm actually staying here with Andrew Giorgio, who's competing this week, and so this is Andrew's host family. So All right. Okay, cool. Tell Andrew say how's it. We chatted to him on swings a couple of, about a month or two ago. So uh, mm. send him our best and uh, and uh, all our all our luck. Let, let's just, and someone actually did send us a, a message on Twitter now. Uh, and by the way, while we're talking to you, Mark, you must remember we're on air from 2 to 6 uh, in the afternoon. So uh, no one's hearing this interview yet. But when people are listening to it, it is, uh, it's because we're playing it back when we are on air. Uh, but you know what? I'm so mixed up on time zones right now. I was in South Africa, then I was in Greenbrier, then I was in Atlanta. I'm, I'm all over. No the problem. But uh, your tweet has uh, prompted a couple of tweets here. One from Troy going, uh, who do you think will place in the top five at the Open then starting tomorrow? Obviously a betting man wants to know and I think there's some very generous odds on people like Ernie but I mean having a look at the conditions then it's going to favor the straight hitters the guys that keep I mean we're going to see Tiger playing this uh, course like he did at the Open at uh, St Andrews one year using a three iron off the tee all day yeah I I, I, I have to believe Tiger's going iron the, 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 the bulk of the time um, you, you mentioned Mickelson earlier he was out having a pretty hard practice session in the rain yesterday afternoon charting a lot of the greens I saw him with irons of tees a lot. What, um, what does he look like in a wet t-shirt competition? <laughs> He's lost a lot of weight, funnily enough. I, I saw him at the Greenbrier and, 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 you know, he struggles with that arthritic condition and, and he's spoken with his doctors and they've recommended a diet change. And, mm. and so as he's eating better, so he's lost a lot of weight. So the wet t-shirt is not as... Steaming. Um, yeah. In something, I guess, is what it was. <laughs> not as, yeah, not as uh, profound as one would expect it to be. Sorry, get back to your answer again. Uh, who, do, who do you think is going to top five then, uh, based on the conditions? Five, I'm not kidding. I, I'd, I'd have to, you know, home. I, I, I've got to go with a homeboy, Lee Westwood. You know, if he can just get past the broadsheets, you know, because if he gets into contention, you know, it's going to be plastered all over the newspapers over here. And dealing with the pressure of playing in front of his home fans is going to be a big deal. But, I, I have to go with Lee Westwood. He, he's he's from close by here. He drives it well. You know, I think it's his time. I, I really do. It's almost destiny that it's coming back here. Luke Donald. Also, you, you you know, he's with such a great short game and the wind blowing tomorrow. It, it's going to be a, a sort of a grinder, sort of a paradise as well. So, so Luke with him, you know, getting up and down like he does will will be a bit of a threat. You know, it's just with Luke, it's always the driving accuracy. You know, he's. He's a wonderful iron player, and his short game has no rival. But but he he, he can't he can tend to scatter them a little bit off the tee. These guys, if they are hitting iron off the tee, so you say some of the guys that tend to scatter, and I think Ernie would fall into that category as well because every now and again he goes through a phase where suddenly he bombs one left or right. Um, but these guys that are hitting it off the tee, whether three iron or so, what what kind, what are they uh, what are they what are they looking at uh, hitting in then? Uh, I mean, how long is this course exactly? Who is that well, behind you? The get... screen's pixelating. Is that Andrew? Yeah, how about we get it from the horse's mouth over here? Hey, Andrew, how's it going, buddy? Good, thanks, Darren. How are you? Yeah, all right. Thank you. I see you wearing your wet uh, your wet overalls there. So have, no, you be, have you been out with a bit of a practice round or what? What's, what's been happening? We're about to head out, actually. We're going to go into the range and hit a few balls today. We've done all our preparation for the week. Now it's just... Uh, Hit a few balls, hit a few putts, hit a few chips, and that's it. All right. Well, we already said to Mark to pass on to you, but we'll pass it on personally. All the best and good luck to you and all the other 13 South Africans taking part. Let's ask you the question while you're there then. If the guys are bombing, I mean, what are you what are you thinking of taking iron off the tee this week? Or uh, And if the guys that are taking a three iron off the tee, as we were discussing about guys like Tiger a little early on, what are, what are they looking at hitting into a sort of a, a regulation par four on, on this course? Um, well, Darren, it depends on the prevailing wind. Um, if it is downwind on the first six holes, you can hit anywhere from a two iron, eight iron to a couple of the holes. Jeez, luck. Uh, <laughs> if a the two wind iron. Is, a a two iron, iron approach. No, two iron off the tee and eight iron into the Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I thought you mean hitting two iron off the fairways. Like, jeez, how long is that par four, yeah? 
But you know what? But if the if the wind isn't down on those first few holes, you can hit two irons into the green quite yeah. comfortably if you're iron off the tee. So, as Andrew points out, the the wind direction has a big influence on things over here, obviously. Yeah. Anything else to add, there, Andrew? Um, yeah, it's better to keep it in the fairway and hit a two iron in rather than hit a driver. He's a rocket scientist, isn't he? <laughs> hey, Andrew, that's my game, but that's me, driver two iron. You know, my, my driver chip out two iron. So I gave me that advice last night, and he chips me on it. <laughs> <laughs> I identify with what you're saying, Andrew. All the best, buddy, and uh, and and good luck for the uh, for the Open Championship, and uh, we'll be watching closely. Yeah. Cheers, thanks a lot. Thanks, bud. Uh, Darren, it, it, it's it's that it's that groundbreaking advice to hit you know hit it in the fairway like Simon offers. Is that, that's why I make the big bucks, you know. Absolutely, uh, and you well deserved. I mean, who, who else would have thought that's the way to play the game? There's a lot game. to be said for stating the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> no one really does it, Simon. No, there's a mar- gap in the market there. I'm look, I'm looking forward to it, Mr. Emmerman's back again, probably at the end of the year, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, to teeing up a game with uh, with Mr. Hill, he's uh, he's he's lethal uh, as far as his uh, his 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 game off the tee goes. It's his big looping draws down yeah. the middle, down the line, yeah. half a swing, well, down the well, line. Let's take him to Beachwood there with that big looping draw. That hasn't got room to fly <laughs> off the tee. Yeah, he's got to take it over someone's house to get it onto that fairway. <laughs> sometimes. All right. So give us your prediction then. Uh, who's your winner? Are you going with Westwood? Uh, I've got it. Yes, uh, obviously, with respect to my young man and my younger brother, you know, I, not not to not to discount Andrew and Trevor. Uh, I, I've got to go with Westwood. Uh, you know, if he's he's got to be the betting favourite. His game fits well for the area. Um, he's from the area, so I'm, I'm I'm for Westwood this week. All right. Did you ever did you listen to our interview with Trevor, by the way? No, but I Please can only don't. imagine. Please don't. <laughs> you, you came up. You came up once in the interview, but don't don't worry about it. It's fine. I mean, I'm sure you know what Trevor Trevor actually had to say. Um, to, know you is to, to know you is to tolerate you, I guess. <laughs> uh, Mark the Guru. So Lee Westwood, he says, um, yeah. And if you, if you are a betting man, I mean, there are still some generous odds, as I said. I'm the, looking at the odds right now, actually. It's going to come down to basically, you know, which one of these guys can hit the ball straight. Just run through them quickly, Simon. Nice odds on Harrington at 18 to one. Tiger the favourite at nine to one. Sheesh. Then um, Lee Westwood. Second favorite, fourteen to one on bet three six five. Sky bet has him on twelve to one. So they're pretty much very they, well. They're very similar. And then What's you, Luke Donald. Luke Donald is eighteen to one and sixteen to one. And then one website bet Victor has him at twenty to one. Yeah, Andrew George at uh, sixteen to one as well. Sixteen thousand so. to one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, if, if I were a betting man. I'd put, I'd lay some. Is are there odds in a playoff? I, I have a feeling there'll be a playoff with okay. the weather. Set up to. Well, that'll be nice Sunday evening viewing. My, uh, what I was suggesting earlier is actually, you, you t- look at nine to one. You've got to put something on Tiger. Cover yourself with Tiger. Uh, go with a guy like Westwood, but then have a look at someone like a Luke Donald, who's who's out there, and, and it'll give you something back. So go for about three or four of the guys that you reckon uh, will suit this course. Cover yourself with a favourite and maybe second favourite, and uh, and then take your chances with a guy like. Uh, I mean, who in South African do you think is best suited to playing it? Well, I, you know, I've got to kind of go with the guys that have got the late early draw because um, tomorrow afternoon the wind's supposed to f- fall down a little bit. It's going to blow hard in the morning and it's supposed to, it's still going to blow in the afternoon, but not as hard. So so I, I would look at the South Africans that are in the afternoon tomorrow mm. um, and then they've got their Friday morning because, you know, the Open Championship really lends itself to where you sit in the draw too because the weather can change so quickly. So yeah. I hadn't really looked at the tee sheets. Um, but of the South African boys, I, you know, they all have the game to compete. You, you know, they, uh, the Cape Tonians play in the wind. The, the, the boys from Joburg, you know, they, they, they're all good ball strikers. The greens here are unlike any open championship green, really. They're actually a little smoother and faster. You know, oftentimes you go to some of these great venues and the greens aren't as quick. So yeah. it, it sort of gets to guys, but the surfaces are good here. So the Joburg boys will put well because they're used to that sort of surface as well. Well, if you look at the odds here, Ernie's at 33 to 1 uh, Charles at 60 to 1 wow and Retif is at 90 to 1 Goose has started playing Goose, well yeah. Yeah, yeah Goose is a good bet at those odds 90 to 1 I'll have a bit of one. that because I mean we've seen him he's a, he's a good win player as well so those conditions won't won't be uh, foreign to him and Louis 45 to 1 Louis at 45 yeah I'd go I'd look I mean it's worth maybe uh, getting something on Goose cover yourself and uh, you know uh, at 9 to 1 you could literally get your money back if you uh, just spread the rest. If you go a thousand on each and just spread the rest around uh, some of the other guys and include a guy like Goose, you never know. It could uh, could work out well for you in the end. 
and then so, David. So, so let me let me let me figure this out. So you've got gears and you've got skills and balls and all this stuff. Is this becoming bets? Is this odds? New? Odds. Odds. Okay. odds. With a Z. Yeah. There we go. You got it right. You you know what right. goes on here, Mark. Listen, nice to catch up with yeah. you, and uh, we look forward to maybe catching up with you on uh, on another Skype catch up next Monday. After and see how we uh, how this all panned out and uh, all the drama after all the drama's finished. Uh, who eventually walked away with a claret jug? That sounds great. You boys take care. It's nice to chat. Thanks, Mark. All the best, and send our regards to uh, to Trev and uh, all the other South Africans yeah. there. Yeah, see you, man. Cheers, bud. Bye bye. Africa's major. Cheers. Ciao. <laughs> we the best on three. One, two, three. We the best. 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mondays to Fridays live on balls.co.za. Balls.co.za.